I'm David Sequeira and I'm an artist and a curator. And I often say that the real medium that I work with is colour. Sometimes my work takes the form of paintings or photographs, clothing or arrangements on shelves. But when I'm making those works of art, actually it's the manipulation of colour that's important in the practice. The name of the exhibition is All the Things I Should Have Said That I Never Said and it's made up of three major works of art. One's called History and Infinity, another one's The Song Cycle and the third one is Untitled India. The three works in the exhibition are connected by my ongoing interest in colour and geometry and all of the forms that an investigation into colour and geometry can take. History and Infinity is a single shelf that wraps right around the gallery and sitting on the shelf are paintings by other artists from different time periods. The oldest dates from about 1750 and the most recent is 2022. And those paintings are visually and conceptually connected by about a thousand vases that are all symmetrical and all opaque in colour. So there was a very specific purpose in having it wrap around the walls. Number one, to create a loop, to create this sense of a kind of circularity about history. But number two, to encompass everybody, to include everybody's story in the idea of history and infinity, just by virtue of occupying space in the gallery. There's something that I, I continually get moved by around the mixture of paintings which people think of as high art, you know, art with a capital A, and vases that you can get at an op shop or that, I, I don't even use the term found vases, I use the term discarded vases. And they exist next to these paintings and yet what they create is something much bigger than a $2 vase. I love it when people's entry point is, you know what, we had a vase, like, didn't we have one of those? And they see that and, and that, that object's transformation when it's shifted off the telly, you know, off the table with the telly and it's in a gallery, it by itself is kind of a junk shop vase. It within the collective is part of an orchestra. The Song Cycle is an ongoing series of works on paper that I've been making. They're all A4 in size and they're these small, intensely coloured geometric diagrams that are painted on music manuscript paper. The bottom of the page is my name and the title of the work and the date. And by labelling something as a song, I'm ascribing a certain energy to that specific combination of colour. You know, I'm a rules guy, like finding infinity within restrictions, I can't stop doing that. So all of those pieces of colour on that painting are the same height and they're only made with circles and straight lines. And I am not done with circles and lines. I still feel like I've done four, over 400, I could do another 400. That experience of infinity, of endlessness, aligns me and my practice with bigger things about the cosmos and, you know, being one tiny part of something much, much bigger. I'm interested in the kind of energy that gets created through certain combinations of geometry and colour. And when colour's used purely for its energetic quality, when it gets combined with other colours, other tones, through the language of geometry, there are very, very particular resonances that can emerge. I think of those resonances like music, like they have a hum to them, like they have a presence. And whilst you can see colour, you actually can't see the experience of colour. And it's a little bit like music. You can see the notes on the page, but the experience of music 
is a very personal and internalised experience. In many ways, these works are about a very personalised, internalised experience of colour and geometry. Untitled India is a brand new work that I've made especially for the project at Bundrel Place. It's made up of 56 bespoke kurtas, which are the long shirts that are worn by men in India and in other parts of Asia. The design is about, I don't know, 800 to 1000 years old. 36 incorporate this very rich saturated colour and the other 20, the fronts have been digitally printed with black and white photographs. And the photographs are from archives and they date from the 1850s right through to the 2020s. And collectively those images form, I guess, my personal history of India. What I want to do is create for people an understanding of the complexity associated with India and Indian history and contemporary India that's bigger than cliché. So that work also has a major performance, like a runway performance that involves 56 volunteer models from the community and it's using all of the tropes of the fashion runway show to talk about colour, geometry and history. There's a term that comes up in my studio practice quite a lot, and that is being in colour. You know, this idea of having 56 models drawn from the community, it's exciting for me because what it means is there are going to be people being in colour. The art, it's not just the kurta, it's the human being inside it. What is it that brings that colour to life? In a sense, it's the human being that breathes life into that garment. I use this term, invisible reality. And an invisible reality is a reality that is invisible. For example, love is probably the ultimate invisible reality. We know love exists, we feel it, but if we dissected ourselves, we could never find love. So it's real, it's just not tangible or visible. And I think there's an invisible reality about colour that I'm constantly exploring. There's something really powerful about the process of showing art. I care about people willing to let their guard down enough to be moved to their core by all that colour is and all that colour can be. And if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to see how it impacts your reading of your past, how it impacts the future, how it impacts the way you live your life and explore all of that, that's a great experience to have with art. And I'd be honoured if people had that experience in this exhibition.